الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين خاتم النبيين ورحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدين النصيحة صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praises are for Allah Al-Ahad Allah who is one As-Samad Eternal, Absolute, Complete Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad Allah begets not nor is he begotten wa Lam Yakullahu Kufu wa Nahad there is nothing and there is no one to compare to Allah. We testify to the fact that Allah Ta'ala, He is one without any partners and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seal of the messengers. We send peace, we ask Allah to send peace and blessings upon him, upon his wives, his household and his faithful companions. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, indeed in Islam, we know very well, just to re-emphasize, just to remind myself and to remind you also that in Islam, the Muslim is bounded by rules and regulations. In Islam, our code and our guide is the Quran, which has been explained to us by the teachings of our Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anybody who goes contrary to the teachings of Al-Quran and to the teachings of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we will be falling into a great fitna we will be falling into a great error this error would lead us upon the part which is known as Dalala or misguidance and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told us that the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that which should be liked and loved by the believers and anyone who practices upon that, upon the part of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be given the title of being called a believer. and sunnati, and whoever will go against, and will talk against, and will act against, and will dislike the teachings of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fahuwa laysa minni, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, then he is not from amongst his ummah. And that is a very severe and stern warning. And based on that is what the believer is supposed to live his life and tread the path that has been paved by Allah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the believer. So after saying all of that, we know the festival, we know the season that we live in. We need to be very, very, very careful lest we celebrate something that the people celebrate claiming that this day which is known as Christmas is known to be the birthday of our Nabi Isa alayhi salatu wasalam because he is our prophet as well and if we commemorate that and celebrate that then we are really adding fuel to the fire because in no way we are told that in the Quran neither in the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we can't celebrate something and we can't commemorate something that there is no basis for in Islam. The Muslim is guided upon the two celebrations which is known as Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And this is how we live our lives. So Alhamdulillah, this was just a reminder for us. And I need us to not forget I want us to always remember because Allah tells us in the Quran that O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and don't 
Le are you Alladina Amanu Takullah? O you who believe fear Allah and let every soul look to what it has sent forth for tomorrow. Fear Allah, Allah is aware of all our actions. Wala takulu, wala takunu kalladina nasullah fa ansahum anfusahum. Don't be like those who forgot about Allah. In other words, they forgot the teachings of Allah. They forgot the laws of Allah. What happened? Allah caused them to forget their own selves. What is my purpose here? Why am I here? What is the reason for my living on earth? We forget our objective. So don't be like those people who will forget the teachings of Allah, the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah tells us in the Quran, Fazkuruni Azkurkum. Remember me, I will remember you. Have you ever wondered or have you ever felt hurt by people? Have you ever felt betrayed by people who you care for, people who you love, people who you consider your own? Have you ever find your parents opposing you, going against you, practicing your way of life, Al-Islam? Have you ever been stuck with a problem so deep that you feel that there is no way out of that pro problem? There is no solution to it? Have you ever fallen sick? Like right now we have sicknesses going on. Viruses in the air. People have fallen sick for weeks. So sick that you feel, wow, there is no way out of this sickness. I can't get out of this sickness. Have you ever stood in the midst of some friends? Listen to them slandering you and they didn't even know that it was you that they are speaking about what about your own people what about people who you live around and people who you consider to be your brothers and sisters how did that make you feel have you ever felt alone have you ever felt lonely that i'm around everybody but still i am around nobody have you, ever, have you ever thought about the logic in some of the things we do as believers and you can't find an answer for that? Why is it that I am doing this? Why do I pray five times a day? Why do I fast? How is it that every time I pass wind, I have to make wudu, but I don't wash that spot. I wash other places. How is it if I have to make masa on my, on my socks, I wipe above the socks, I don't wipe under the socks. Is there any logic in some of the things that we do? Have you ever wondered about that? Have you ever been mocked by your own relatives and families? Your own brothers, your own uncles, your own aunties? How did that make you feel? All these questions I ask because Allah Ta'ala, He brings these very similitudes in the Quran for all times to come. That one day we will be in a situation. We will become betrayed by somebody who we consider our own. We might tell them something and keep that as a secret. But they will betray us. Allah tells us in the Quran about the wives of Nuh alayhi salam. The wives of Lut alayhi salam. How they betrayed their husbands. Whenever you feel betrayed by somebody... I want us to always remember the story and the kissa of Yusuf alayhi salam. When Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they came to their father and they said to him, Ya Abana, O oh our father, Malaka, what is the matter? La na'mana, la, ma la na'mana ala Yusuf. Wa inna lahu la nasihin. O oh, our father, what is the matter? What is the reason that you fail to send Yusuf alayhi salam with us? We will protect him. We will take care of him. We are his well wishers. What is, what is the problem? Why don't you send him to be amongst us? Arsilahu ma'ana gadan. 
yartaq wa yal'ab wa inna lahu lahafizun send him with us tomorrow let him enjoy himself let him play let him run let him have fun we will protect him against any evil allahu akbar you know what was the outcome of that do you know what was the outcome of that they made a plot and a plan the brothers let us kill him let us kill him hasad and jealousy anytime you feel betrayed by your own flesh and blood anytime you find your own flesh and blood plotting against you remember the story of yusuf what was the response how did he meet out with his brothers how did he treat them after so many years all he did made dua to allah and he forgave them made dua to allah inside of that hole inside of that well that they had thrown him he made dua to allah and allah put him on the throne when you find your parents opposing you that it is time for you to perform salat it is time for you to fast it is time for you to do this and to do that and they are going against you i want you to remember the qissa and the story of ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim alayhi salam he went to his father allah tells us in the quran wazkur fil kitab ibrahim remember the story of ibrahim alayhi salam innahu kana siddiqan nabiya he was truthful he was a prophet idha qala li abihi ya abat ya abati he says oh my father lima ta'budu ma la tasma'u wa la tubsiru wa la tughni anka shay'a why do you worship that which cannot see that which cannot hear that which cannot avail you in aught in nothingness why do you worship that ya abati qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiya he says oh my father knowledge has come to me knowledge has come to me which has not come to you follow me oh my father i will guide you on a straight path ya abati oh my father these terms is out of love ya abati like how we would say ya oh my beloved wife oh my beloved son Oh my beloved father lima ta'budu shaitan why is it that you are worshiping these devils this shaitan this shaitan he is nothing but an open enemy to you oh my father don't worship shaitan he says oh my father inni aqafu ay yamassaka adhab min ar-rahman i fear that the punishment of ar-rahman will fall on you I fear about that what fatakuna li shaitani waliya and you will become a companion of shaitan now what is going to be the state with you oh my father his father says to him araghibun ana alihati ya ibrahim oh ibrahim are you talking against my gods are you talking against my gods la arjumannaka he says i will stone you wahjurni leave me get away from me la arjumannaka i will stone you a great stoning ibrahim alayhi salam is holding his father hand and trying to take him out of the pit of fire the very said father held the hand of his son and took him to the fire to be burned whenever you feel opposed by your parents always remember the story of ibrahim still he was kind and loving to his father allahu akbar have you ever felt in such a state where you are stuck with a problem there is no way out of this problem and we go through it every day oh allah how do i get above this how do i move forward from here we try to find solutions in all our problems whenever you feel that all doors are closed and there is no way out i want us to remember the story of the noon the companion of the fish yunus alayhi salam where he was where he was 
But we answered him when he cried out to us. What did he say? La ilaha illa ant. Subhanak. Oh Allah, there is none deserving to be worshipped except you. Subhanak. Glory be to you. Inni kuntu min al I was oppressing my soul. I was an oppressor of my own self. I was committing a sin. You told me to go to one place, I went to another place. Subhanallah, when we feel that there is no way out, remember the story of Yunus alayhi salam, where he cried to Allah and how Allah listened to him and brought him out, where nobody could have seen, where nobody could have even imagined that a man will be alive in a whale's belly. Allahu Akbar. The darkest moments of our lives, Allah is ready to listen. When someone slanders you, when someone slanders you, not backbite, because slandering is worse. If somebody says something about you, it is true, but they said it wrong behind your back, that is backbiting. But now they are saying something about you which is untrue. It is false. That is what? Slander. It is worse than backbiting. Remember the story in Surah Noon, in Surah Noor. What is that? The story of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Who was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha? The wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She cried before Allah. She made dua to Allah. Allah ta'ala revealed her incident in the Quran as a lesson for all of us. When people slander us, and we cry before Allah, Allah Ta'ala will make that as a lesson for all times to come. Allah will elevate us. She always thought, she said, I always thought that Allah will free me from this slander, but I never thought for once that Allah will make it as a lesson in the Quran for all times to come. All times. Whenever somebody slander you, remember the story of Aisha, Radiallahu ta'ala anha. If you are ill, your body aches. Subhanallah, you feel pain. You cry. Remember Ayyub alayhi salam. Ayyub alayhi salam. Every problem and affliction that you could think about touching a man, it touched him. Today, when a problem as simple as money hits us, Business went bad. We can't rest in peace. We can't rest. We toss, we turn. Wow. What about now? The children dies. What about now? We lose our home. What about now? Nobody coming close to you because sore and leprosy on your body. So much so people telling you, curse your Lord and die too. Allahu Akbar. This is what this one prophet of Allah went through. And still, he cried before Allah. He cried before Allah that the Quran says, Wa Ayyub, remember Ayyub. Idh nada rabbahu anni masani durru wa anta arham rahimin When distress fell upon him, Distress fell upon him and he called upon his Allah. He says, Anta Arhama Rahimin. You are the most merciful of all those who show mercy. Subhanallah. Allah says, Fasta Jabana Lahu. Fakashafana ma bihi mindur. We answered him and we removed the distress that he was faced with. Allahu Akbar. Who is he calling to? Who he's crying to? Allah. Whenever problems come, whenever calamities fall on us, Allah, call upon him. He is going to answer us. We need to remember Allah. Don't forget Allah. Remember Allah. Remember also, when you are all alone, you feel alone, you feel sad, you feel depressed, you can't move out from that gum and that sadness. Everyone is around you, but your heart and your mind is somewhere else. And you are all alone. Remember our father, Adam, alayhi salam. All alone in Jannah. All alone in Jannah. 
Allah brought him out from Jannah, all alone in dunya. Who was there with him? His wife is somewhere else. He is somewhere else. All alone, the only insan on earth. One man. Imagine how he would have felt. We are still surrounded by people. He was with no one at all. But, Rabbana zalamna anfusana O our Allah, we have sinned against our souls. We have made a mistake. We have transgressed against our souls. Wa illam lana. If you don't forgive us, what arhamna? If you don't show mercy upon us, lana kuna na min al khasidin. We will be from amongst the losers. Allah Taala accepted his tawbah, accepted his repentance, accepted the repentance of his wife. Allah brought them back together. We are never alone. Allah is always with us. When you can't see the logic in things, remember, Nuh alayhi salam, Allah Ta'ala commanded Nuh alayhi salam, build a ship in the desert. Allah, Allah. Build a ship in the desert. People would walk, people would look at him, and they would laugh at him, and they would mock at him, and they would jeer at him. Madman, in the desert you build in a ship, no water. But guess what? He never disobeyed the command of Allah. Allah will command us to do things too. And we are commanded to do things too. Don't look, don't look for logic. Don't think about logic. Think about obedience to my Allah. Samirna wa atana. We hear, we obey. Allah says to do it, we do it. What was the reason and the logic behind Allah Ta'ala telling Ibrahim salam to sacrifice your son? Take your son, take the life of your son. But obedience, obedience was there. So whenever we feel that we can't reason with certain things in Islam, sometimes people, we hear sisters saying it too, why a woman has to cover her hair? What is he, what is he reasoning for that? It's old-fashioned, it's outdated. They say it's a tradition from India. When people used to come and they used to wear the orni. And that is a tradition. This is not Islam. No. This is a command in the Quran. Don't try to think about the reason and the logic. Think about this is the command of Allah and I am obedient to that. If you are mocked, people jeer at you. They laugh at you. Look at you. Where are you going with that big beard, boy? Razor blade going out of style or what? Eh? Or you can buy two brush, or you using tooth stick now. Dot one. Eh? Long time we used to use that. You go to a restaurant and you're using your hand. You're using your hand to, use, to put the food in your mouth. Well, or you can eat with knife and fork. Or you don't know how to use that. Or you're outdated. People laugh at you. Muslim does do that. They just laugh at you. Yeah. Remember, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mocked at, was jeered at, spat on his face, majnoon, crazy man, sahir, sorcerer, jadugar, magician, you name it, they called him. They abused him. And together with all of that, together with all of that, they remained patient and they made duas to Allah. Patience and dua to Allah. If you feel because we commit sins, we have bad thoughts in our minds, we do wrong things, Allah is not going to answer me. Don't let that be an obstacle in your path. Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani, the great scholar and the great commentator of Sahih al Bukhari, he has written, he says, Do not allow your bad thoughts. Do not allow the bad thoughts about yourself. What kind of person I am? What bad person I am? Allah is going to answer me. Huh? I have done so many wrong things. So many sins I have committed. Do not allow that to prevent you from calling out to your Allah. He says why? He says because Iblis. Iblis. Iza qala rabbuka. Remember when your Lord, he says to the angels, to what? Bow down. Fasajadu illa iblis. All the angels prostrated. 
except Iblis. Iblis, he says what? I am better than him. I am better than Adam. Allah Ta'ala says to Iblis, leave this place. Get out of this place. Disgrace. Humiliated. Do you know what Iblis says to Allah? Allahu Akbar. He says, Oh my Allah, anzirni ila yawmi yuba'athun. He says, give me some time until the day of resurrection. That was a dua he made. Oh Allah, give me some time, give me some respite until the day of resurrection. In other words, don't destroy me now. Don't punish me now. Don't wipe me out now. Oh Allah, give me some time until the day of resurrection. Allah says, Inna ka minal munzirin. Granted. Granted. You are from amongst those who we have given time. We have given time. Imagine how long Iblis and he's still alive. Who has given him that? Allah. Allah has accepted his dua. If Allah could accept the dua of Iblis, are we worse than Iblis? No way. No way. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters, there will always be moments in our lives there will always be moments of sadness, loneliness, betrayal, sickness. There will always be moments of opposition. All these different moments will come in our lives. Fazkuruni azkurkum. Remember Allah. Call to Allah. Allah will remember us. Allah will pull us out. Allah will take care of us. Allah will help us. Before I end, I want us to understand something. This masjid, this masjid is a masjid of salamat and peace. This masjid, we don't harbor ill will and envy and malice in this masjid. In this masjid, we practice Islam to the best of our ability. Islam in itself means peace. In every masjid they preach this. Islam means peace. It is very sad for us as muqtadis, followers, praying in this masjid or in any masjid, listening to Juma Khutbah, learning something about our deen, and then our actions go total in contradiction to what we are listening to in the various masjid. Just this week going here, we are hearing about brothers being shot. A brother tell me, them brothers just come here. You see them brothers? I never see them brothers in this masjid. Why? Because they come, they come when you stand for salat and ask salam done, them go on too. You all would have heard of the shooting by Chief Curry. And Chief Curry is a Muslim too. They say it was Muslims who went and attacked that place. Eh? And them fellas come in here. We don't tolerate that. Brothers, if that is what we learn in here, don't come. If that's what we learn in here, don't come. Because this is going out to the media that in Montrose Mosque, we don't propagate hatred and violence. We are not about that. Islam teaches us about principle. Principle. If a war is being waged upon us, we stand up for hak and truth. And we defend hak and truth. But we don't commit no crimes and, and injustice upon people. Allahu Akbar. Whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, we are not permitted to do that. We can't take the law in our own hands. No. So in this masjid, we are not tolerating that. We don't want that there. Let us change our lives around. Life is sweet. Life is beautiful. Let us submit our lives to Allah. Is it a bad boy thing we're looking for? A name and a fame? A piece of iron we want in we hand? What are we going down in the ground with? It's not iron, it's dirt. It's mud. But the kind of iron will be pounding in our heads inside there. We don't want to face that. If we don't want to face that, let us see the reality of what life is. Be good to people. Be good to yourselves. Allah didn't bring us in this earth to commit 
corruption, fitna and fasad. This is why the angels ask Allah, you know, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَائِلٌ فِي الْأَوْدِ Khalifa. Remember when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create and place on earth vicegerents, representatives in the form of what? Mankind, insan, you and me. The angel says, أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِقُ الدِّمَا O Allah, are you going to place on earth those who will corrupt the land and commit bloodshed? Eh? The angels asking Allah that. What we see in today? The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sad to say we are involved in too much bad things. Brothers, come out of that. Some sisters in it too. Come out of that. Come out of that. Let us lead, lead good lives. We have families. Let us set a good example for our children. What we expect that they will grow up to be. We want them to be hufas of Quran. We want them to be imams and leaders of the ummah. We want them to be ulama, alimas. We want them to be lawyers and doctors and engineers. Good businessmen, good businesswomen. With good akhlaq and good character. This is what we want. We don't want them to be mudrims. We don't want them to be criminals. No criminals. May Allah Ta'ala bless us. May He continue to guide us. May He open our hearts to see truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood. One brother say, the greatest mufti could come and give the best talk. The best talk. And then another brother come and tell them about the gun. And tell them about the extortion. And tell them about the nice things with the bullets. And you know they leave out everything the mufti say and they go on there. This is the effect that the Islam having on our lives. This is the effect. Our Iman is not going up, it's going down. Or, if we act like that, it is safe to say, we have no Iman. Because Iman does not push a person to do bad. Iman pushes a person to do good. Good. Let us live good in our neighborhood. Live good. Anywhere you go in the world, live good. Let me tell you, boys and girls, live good, live good. May Allah give us the understanding of this deen. Allahumma faqihna fi deen. Wa Allah give us understanding of this deen. Wa alimna al Quran al Hakim. Teach us the wisdom of the Quran. We beg Allah that He will give us all the good in this life, the best in the hereafter, and He will save us all from the torments of the hellfire. والآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله في رب العالمين